Twins to Try has a new video out about Burt Kreischer's Bachelor Meltdown. I don't know what this is about. I think this might be about the Joe listing. I haven't watched it yet, so please forgive me if you watched it. So let's watch the Twins to Try a new video on Burt Kreischer. Let's see that. This one here. The Burt Kreischer's Bachelor Party Meltdown. Let's check it. Let's see what this is saying. Big up two ladies to try. Big up two ladies to try. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the meltdown that Burt Kreischer had at Mark Norman's bachelor party because this story and the aftermath of it is just classic Burt. I mean, it's exactly what you'd expect from him. But, you know, I will say I think he's learning from this a little bit. Like when he first talked about it, he did have a moment of self-awareness. That's a large wake. And I don't pay attention to other people's feelings. And it's the Burt Show. And I, and I don't allow room for other people. And, I, and, I, and I'm working on that. I'm working on that. So at least he's somewhat aware of his problems. And he's right. That is what caused this meltdown. I'm sorry, but congratulating of mid... Uh, someone in their 50s for having self-awareness is redacted as fuck, bro. Like, this guy has been babied his entire life, innit? People are actually impressed. His friends are actually impressed that he's finally starting to realize that he might be not be the most important person in the world at all times. This guy's in his 50s. He has children. Absolutely crazy. So if you're not familiar with the situation, this happened last year, but it was only brought to light a couple months ago when Ari Shafir talked about it on Two Bears, One Cave. So people are able to hear Bert's perspective on what happened and also Ari's, but Ari didn't see the whole thing. He didn't see the start of the meltdown. So people didn't really know the full story because obviously we can't just trust what Bert Kreischer has to say. But just recently, Joe List, who is the one that Bert flipped out at and caused him to have the meltdown, he went on Tom Segura's podcast and gave his side of the story which I trust way more than Bert's, obviously. I mean, Bert was wasted, and of course, he's kind of known for exaggerating and lying about things. But Joe List, on the other hand, he was completely sober, and he just seems way more trustworthy than Bert. Also, I don't think he really cares to try to make Bert look bad or get revenge or something. I mean, he's just trying to state the facts and give his side of the story. Like, I don't think he even wanted to talk about this publicly at all. Ari's the one that brought it up, and that was eight months after it happened. So it's clear Joe wasn't going to bring it up and he wanted to just let things work out behind the scenes. And it sounds like they probably have at this point. And I think it'll probably just end here because I think Bert realizes he screwed up. And I doubt he's going to try to argue with Joe about the details of what happened. Like Joe obviously said, Bert got some of the facts wrong. But I think Bert would even admit that now. Like when Bert originally told his side of the story, I think everybody expected him to exaggerate and make things up to try to justify his actions. I mean, this is Bert Kreischer we're talking about. Obviously, his perspective isn't going to be the most accurate. What you're saying right now is is so specific to a Burt version of a story though. The, this gross exaggeration of something that is that makes it where like we kept this waiting forever and then you're like, that's not true. Also when Bert first talked about how this all went down, there's really nobody there to question what he was saying. I mean, Ari, he was there, but he missed the first half of the meltdown. So he didn't really know the exact details, but obviously he would still call Bert out on some things. Like that's what Bert needs, just somebody there to call him out and then he'll start backtracking. And they got pizza, and I and I, I didn't melt down. And I, by the way, I was like, yeah, out you did. You melted, bro. I melted down. I melted down. I melted. Okay, I, I definitely melted down. Hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. I, I love when he starts telling a lie and then I, realize, oh, someone on, knows the facts. Right, you know Fuck. I self-corrected. He right? said I self-corrected. Okay, yeah. Okay. By self-corrected. That's weird. Can I I correct Can you. I jump in but, though? Yeah. That is classic Burt Kreischer right there. I mean, he knows Ari's at that party, but still he's an act like, oh, I didn't have a meltdown. What are you talking about? And it's too bad Ari didn't let Burt just continue and give his own version of events because that would have been hilarious to listen to. Obviously, there's nothing to compare it to at this point, but then Ari at the end could have been like, dude, that is not how it went down at all. Let's hear Joe List's side of the story. Like, this is the perfect example of Burt's mindset. You know, he probably realized, oh yeah, I'm the first one to tell this story and Joe's probably not going to talk about it. He doesn't want to. So I can pretty much say whatever I want. But thankfully, Joe addressed it recently on Tom's podcast and corrected some things. And I'll get into that in a second. But first, I want to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. And nope, I skipped that one. Answering okay. call reviews. Oh, 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 oh. Or you can click out oh. if you to get to this party because things aren't going exactly how he wants them to. Like one of the top comments on the podcast that Joe List just did with Tom Segura says, long story short, Bert tried to make someone else's bachelor party all about him. Shocking, right? And also, of course, it's over food. 
So if you're not totally familiar with what happened, Burr ordered Thai food for the whole group, and Joe List was the only sober one, so he drove Burr and some other comedian to the restaurant, and they're just gonna order it there and then hang out at the bar while they're waiting for it. And the place wasn't very far, so Joe just dropped them off, and he's gonna go pick them back up because, you know, he's sober and he probably doesn't care to hang out at the bar. Also, I don't think he's very good friends with Burt to begin with. Exactly. And everybody else was still at the house. But it sounds like Burt was getting offended that Joe didn't want to hang out with him because, you know, Burt, he's supposed to be the life of the party. You know what's funny about this whole escapade and this whole drama? At the heart of it, Burt's basically main issue is that Joe List didn't suck him off for ordering Thai food. Like, I think it happens a lot. I don't know... It's like, Burt's got this weird thing where, like, he treats every time he gets drunk like the first time you do drugs or you drink alcohol. You know, like, the first time you do it, you have this magical idea in your head of what it was like. And sometimes addiction can kind of start because you start chasing that dragon. But it's never, you're never going to replicate the first time you had a sip of wine, the first time you had to have some hard liquor, the first time you had a beer, the first time you had a bump or a pill or whatever else that you do or, or smoke, right? You're never gonna, ever going to re replicate that feeling. But Bert always wants to replicate it. And part of that experience for the first time is all the random shit you did. Because sometimes some of your best experiences of drinking or whatever it may be are usually random times where like you and your friends were like sitting on a wall somewhere. We're in a park. We're sitting in the parking lot somewhere. We're just fucking around in someone's house. It's usually nothing crazy. It's just because you were with a group of people that you loved. You had a great time. You all kind of were in the moment, having a, having a blast, drinking, doing whatever you were doing. And everything that happened was kind of, that made it fun. Maybe you ordered uh, McDonald's breakfast in the morning and it hit really hard and it tasted fucking amazing because you're all sharing it, blah, blah, blah. And I think Bert loves those stories. So he always wants to be the hero of those stories. So in his head, he was doing that Thai food ordering thing, not because he wanted to do it out of his goodness of his, of his heart. It was mostly selfish so he could appear like the savior of the story. Like everyone was hungry and Bert got Thai food. Yay, Bert's here. Like he likes that. It's like a scene in like American in, in like an American movie. He walks through the door. Yay, he's here. He's the guy, the party guy. And he's like, hey guys, calm down. I'm just here for you. You know, trying to be that fake humble shit. That's what that's what's playing in Bert's head. It's like a college movie in his head every single day. Every interaction is like, yeah, he's here, the guy. The guy with the drinks. He's got the drive. He's got the it's like it's not that deep. So that's why you have to be aware in life to be really wary of guys like that. People who pretend or act like they're being charitable, act like they're being altruistic, but really is self-serving, right? It's really self-serving. They, they, they try and act like they, they're being selfless and they're trying to help the group and they're putting themselves out for the betterment of everybody else. But they're actually doing that so that you can thank them. It kind of reminds me of the mum in a, in a group of friends of mums who goes out of their way to always start cleaning up and organizing and telling people what to do and try to take the de facto like leader role all the time. You feel like they're doing it to try to help, but they're also doing it because they want to get a pat on the back. You know, it's like, just chill, just relax. We're all mums here. We're all going to look after each other, look after our kids, look after each other, everybody around you, I mean, nursery, wherever you are, just chill. Don't always try and be the one that's like trying to sort things out and play things and put people in line and stuff. It's just annoying. Like he wants a bit of a pat. He, he basically wanted a pat on the back for ordering fucking Thai food. It's like, chill out, chill out. So when they're partying and somebody chooses not to be around him, he gets freaked out and he kept trying to convince Joe to stay and then he called him back and he said they're ready and then Joe showed up and Bert tried to drag him into the bar. So I drove over and then at this point, Bert came out and was like, get in here, come on. I mean, he was pretty banged up. He was like, let's go. And I was like, oh no, I'm picking you up. And he was like, come on. Get in here. And to be fair to Bert, he just wanted to hang and connect, yeah. I think. But I was like, yeah. I don't want to hang out at the bar. I'm hanging out. We're playing charades. So I went back. Can you imagine how exhausting it must be to be a comedian that's sober within the stand-up comedy thing world? Because these guys are already like adult babies, right? They're like caught in the suspense. They're in like a suspended state of adolescence. They kind of don't want to grow up. They sort of live this fanciful, pretend life where they get to go on the road, hang out at bars, do comedy, get paid handsomely for it, have lovely, adoring fans, and probably get comped. I'm assuming a lot of comedians, especially at the top, 
they get drink tokens they get maybe get given some drinks they might get drink sponsors right so you you can you can indulge all your vices really if when you want so when you're the person in a group that's sober it must be hard to navigate because everybody kind of likes being out as a comic because it gives you an excuse to be away from your family and to do the things that you enjoy to do which is your vices when you don't want to do that shit you just want to tell jokes and hang out it must be hard to like have a fun time because everybody's sloshed right everybody's really sloshed then i came back a third time i drove there and this time they left me like in the car for like eight minutes and so i texted bert and was like dude because now i was getting furious that yeah. i was being treated kind of like an uber driver yeah sure so that sounds exactly like something bert cried yo big up austin casey bert does even though he's we all know this but i agree with you as what? What do you what do you block out there? But fucks. But what's the asterisk? I don't know what the asterisks are. Write it in the chat, Austin. Austin Casey. What what did you miss out? <laughs> you missed out loads of words. What did you say? But cry, what does something even though he's something? We all know this, but I agree with you, AZ. Hmm. I sure would do. Write in the chat, Austin. Write in the chat. And of course, when Bert mentioned this, I don't think he said anything about trying to drag Joe into the bar. And I'm sure one of the reasons why Bert didn't want to come out and made Joe wait so long is because he probably was trying to force Joe to go in there. And of course, when Bert talked about this, he said pretty much the exact opposite. Yeah. Joe and I have a couple of cocktails. We call Joe List and we say, hey, can you come grab us? We're ready. Joe List took a while, which is fine. And Joe DeRosa and I were kind of breaking his balls. So I ran over there in the car. I have the text. Because in the story he told, I kept them waiting, which is not true. forever. That's exactly <laughs> wrong. So the okay, yeah, big up Austin. Okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No worries, no worries, no worries. Big up you, big up you, big up you. These two are already pretty annoyed with each other, but then Bert just completely. Again, I listen to choose to be stories. I listen with choose to be stories, and I honestly do think, I honestly do think, that it's no surprise they don't get on. Joe List is a very specific personality it would it wouldn't make sense that they would be friends anyway to be fair and i personally think they're trying to play this down because the fans can get a bit annoying the fans can get annoying asking too many questions they can make the situation worse but i don't think they're ever going to be friends anyway they're not you know what i mean they're just not going to be friends it's just not gonna vibe they don't really click that well so um yeah i think there was some actual annoyance there i think there was a probably a point where joe probably was like this guy's a fucking dickhead right and brett probably thought the same thing about him but personality wise it just was never gonna work anyway he snapped on because it sounds like bert is legitimately drunk most of the time <laughs> so it's like <laughs> if you're sober that's the worst type of person to hang out with no because joe mentioned that he ordered pizza because he didn't want any of the thai food and the one thing that i will say in bert's defense is joe probably should have just told him he's getting his own food but joe even admits this and i should have said hey guys Bert, I don't like Thai food, so I'm just going to order this additionally. Yeah. But also, I bet Bert would have tried to stop him. And also, to be fair to Bert, Joe List also has that really annoying thing that some guys have. It. Again, I think it's, again, it must, it must be, it must be the way you were brought up. It must just be like being spoiled when you're younger. Because Joe List has this thing where he has a very exact way of eating. He only eats like pizzas and chicken nuggets and shit. You know those type of guys that don't, everything, to, everything else is kind of too exotic. They hate Thai food, all that sort of shit. Now, nah, I just like pizza and sandwiches and all that sort of stuff. It has to be a particular thing, particular condiments. Like, it's like, bro, like, I grew up in a house where you had no options. You just had to eat what was fucking available. Do you know what I mean? It's so odd. Like, I, literally, my mom would be like, hey, if you're not going to eat that, you're going to go hungry. There is no fucking, oh, I want this. I want soy milk. I want that. I don't want this. Like, no, whatever's available is available. If you want to eat your own thing, go make your own money and buy your own thing. But what we're eating in the house is fucking this. So I think this person, Joe List and Bert, weren't going to work in that regards because Joe has a very particular way of eating. And I like him, but nigga only eats fucking pizzas and chicken nuggets. Do you know what I mean? Um, from ordering it so yes yeah, exactly i love how deep we are into these people's lives we are dissecting an argument over thai food and pizza but that's the thing though i would rather be doing this than anything else in the world this to me is so much fun it takes my mind off everyday life it essentially makes you realize just how redacted we all are 
because we're paying attention. They're making it seem like it's a big issue. It's all shits and giggles. And if anything, for me, like I said prior, I'm just not a fan of reality TV. It's just never been my vibe, really. The only thing I kind of watched was maybe, you know, early, early Big Brother. But even then, I didn't watch it too long. So this is sort of like my version of like Desperate Housewives, um, you know, Basketball Wives, Love and Hip Hop, Love Island. Instead of watching all that shit, I pay attention to these guys' lives and, I am, and I've got an understanding or a memory <laughs> of Joe's list fucking dietary requirements. You get what I mean? This is sort of my version of it. This is my VH1. <laughs> oh, maybe that's why I didn't tell him because Bert always has to be the one that's running the party and he wants to be responsible for everybody having a good time and everything going according to plan, his plan. You know, Bert wanted to walk through that door and have everybody be like, oh, perfect timing. This food looks great. Exactly. Thanks, Bert. Exactly. So Joe ordering exactly. pizza exactly. threw exactly. all that off even though everybody still ate the Thai food. Exactly. It's not like it went to waste or anything, but just the fact that things didn't- He wanted everyone to say, oh my God, Bert, Bert, the Thai food. Then he wanted everyone to go back on their podcast and talk about, oh my God, Bert's amazing. He brought everyone Thai food. Like, oh, get over yourself, bro. Yo, exactly how Bert wanted them to. Then he got really upset about it. Also, I'm taking Chinese food over Thai food any day of the week. Fight me on that. I'm taking Chinese food over Thai food any day of the week. Fight me on that. I think Thai food is slightly overrated. Because I know Bert, I think what part of what was upsetting to him is that when he ordered Thai food for everybody, he's like, I'm, I'm doing this so everybody has a good time and enjoys this Thai food. Which we did. I'm actually taking Korean food over Thai food also. I'm taking Chinese and Korean over Thai. But, wow. no, and then when this he- This is why you're my best friend. This is why you're my best friend. <laughs> and then he showed up <laughs> and there's pizza. Keep going, and he's keep like, going, what? Tom, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> he shows up and there's pizza and it's like you're kind of like taking the party down a notch that he was throwing for you in that moment you know what i mean like yes. yep. like like the thai food was for all we're all gonna have a good time look what i did for you and yeah. it's almost like you know what you can keep your gift to yourself and that's the way yep. it, he, he registered it in that moment as he was screaming at, at at joe we were all enjoying the thai food like, it's cool that he wants to make sure everybody has a good time, but he's obviously taking things a little too far here. I mean, ordering pizza and Thai food is not that big of a deal. And of course, even Bert ended up eating some of the pizza, which is hilarious, especially because Bert said a big problem he had with Joe during that whole thing was Joe didn't thank him for the Thai food, which sounds so stupid because Joe didn't even eat any of it. And then also Bert ate his food and didn't thank him for it. The other ar the argument that Bert has is that I never said thank you, yeah. which is true. This and this I know, I, yeah. Anyway, you get it just a bit. I'm not watch the whole thing. Big up um, to it to try. Appreciate you. Um, I'm kind of bored of this now. These fucking middle-aged white men talking about food. It kind of, you know, Assad put me off now. When I started to think about it, I was like, you know what? This is actually a waste of time, isn't it? <laughs>